Before Randy comes up, we have the one thing to do, which is we are going to uh, choose nations, a nation to pray for, for the year. For the year, and everyone's invited to do so. I'm pulling up a couple of scriptures. Uh, <clears throat> Randy was with us on the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. As he spoke, you'll hear his story. I felt the Lord strongly say, I want you to get, ask Randy to come back on the first Sunday to launch us into a larger, into the vision that he's now presenting. God is giving to us. And I thought, okay, and I asked Randy after service, and it actually wasn't sure if it would work out, but it did work out. From that point on, then the Lord began to unpack all kinds of ideas that I think really were genius ideas that have to be from him. One was that this year we're going to, starting this Sunday, each of us, by lot, pick a nation and take that nation um, and pray for it, carry that nation in our heart to the Lord throughout the year. And then that's all, that, all required, all that God has asked us to begin with, and we'll see what God does with that. There's 197 flags around this sanctuary, 197 flags inside five different uh, buckets that are going to be passed. After you pull the nation up, then will come a clipboard and just write your name, the name of the nation you pit chose, and um, your email so we can communicate and tell you when that for one thought came was when that month, you know, each month we're praying between services for 20, 25 nations. So the month that your nation's up, we invite you to come and help unpack some of the, your, the prayer you've been praying in secret, you could release out publicly. But, other, but no obligation. If you're just visiting, you're welcome to join us. If you're online, you can email us at jubilee, jubileechurch.org, and we'll send you a nation. Same idea, pulling it from the lot. In uh, Proverbs 16.33, it says, oh, one other thing, while you're finding that. Um, the other thing was, I'm asking everybody to believe God for $100 to give into the nation's offering next month on the first Sunday of February. Because that way we are intentionally supporting those who are going out and volunteering. Like Rebecca Morgan, who is uh, volunteering in Jerusalem right now, helping handicapped uh, disabled Israelis uh, ha have a normal, uh, have s a form of independence in living. And she's there, she says, I read a note from her, she says, so I love it. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes it's, you know, they get upset, angry. Sometimes they get into a lot of issues. But I am pouring out my life to that. And we want to, you know, when we send people out, we want to see them well supported. The Cuskies, she needs some more money. So pray for that. And if you want to give, we can give that way. But also the Cuskies on the 20th go before the Minister of Interior for renewal of their visa or or reg residency uh, for them to continue serving in Israel as volunteers, helping all kinds of crazy ways as a doula driver, driver, driver of doulas as a Gentile who can drive on the Shabbat and can help the ultra-Orthodox get uh, who wives are in labor to the hospital to have their baby get the doulas, which are like midwives, into the hospital. So she's been interwoven into a, quite a community. They need our, the favor and grace. Uh, Randy and Edie live in Thailand full-time. These are people who live full-time out of the country, and they have uh, carry uh, reconciling and prayer anointing for that nation to call the nation to their future. So those are ways we get involved. We pray, we, we help, we sow. But if you don't have a passport, you get that $100, go buy a passport. I mean, buy it as you, it costs you about hundred dollars to get your photo and pay, you know, do the application. I'm not saying I like, go buy one, you know, like change your name and <laughs> get. An, I'm not saying that. saying use that money to pay for you to get a passport legally of the appropriate means. <laughs> but it's it, it's 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 good to keep a current passport because the studies show that if you get a passport, you're likely to leave the country within the next year. And many times when an opportunity to go is being presented, if we don't have the passport, we may not consider the opportunity. But if we know we can, it's just a matter of the will of the Lord.
So that's coming. So we're believing God for the blessing of um, everybody having a passport, everyone carrying a nation. Proverbs 33, 1633 says, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. I want to read one more. Uh, Lots are historically, from biblical times, used to allow God to make a decision for us where we wouldn't know how to make the decision, or in case of like Proverbs 18 says, if people are contending over an outcome, if you, if you let the lot decide, it keeps the mighty apart so they don't go into war. We use, uh, lots were cast uh, for Jonah. When he said, I am the reason for the storm, they still drew lots to see if indeed he was before they threw him overboard. Uh, Matthias, who was the 12th apostle, chosen in the place of Judas, was chosen by a lot. As there were two they had brought before the Lord and asked him to make the choice. Zacharias, who went to, to burn incense, who had the visitation from Gabriel, he was selected by lot to go. Um, uh, Saul and Jonathan, when the conflict of being who had broken the vow, lot had helped decide who it was who had done that. Uh, Purim. We study that. That is the word for lot in uh, some language. And it was the way uh, Haman made, uh, found the date he wanted to set a strategy to genocide all of the Jews living in the Persian Empire. So, uh, and that turned on him. Thank you. Jesus' garments decided by lot. And uh, the scapegoat of the two goats, which one was going to be the scapegoat, decided by lot. We do it today. Uh, who's going to kick off? Yeah. Flipping of a coin is a lot. It's between two people, so one or two choice. Uh, we did it this year in an election in the East Coast. There was one, I think it was a Congress, a congressional race, or it was a race of significance that they couldn't, it was so deadlocked, even after recounts and that, that they had to go follow the state uh, charter and just flip a coin. Wow. Because it's just at some point you have to allow a decision to be made. But Here's the cool thing. The inheritance of Israel was given to Israel after they'd crossed the Jordan and began to take the land. It was given as allocations by lot. In uh, Numbers 26, 51, it says uh, ju they just counted uh, all of Israel. So Numbers 26, 51, and they had done the second census, and God commands Moses, and he says... Um, uh, 20, no, 26, 51. Those, they numbered them, then verse 52, the Lord then spoke to Moses saying, verse 53, to these lands shall you divide as an inheritance according to the number of names, to a large tribe, a larger inheritance, to a small tribe, a smaller inheritance, each one an inheritance according to those numbered, but the land shall be divided by lot. And you shall inherit according to the names of the tribes of their fathers. Then one last verse in Joshua 19.51. Uh, when they had entered in the initial conquest established for uh, Judah and Benjamin tribal territories. But there were still seven more tribes that had to, to, to go and gain their inheritance. So they surveyed the rest of the land that had been promised to Abraham. They came back with, the, you know, a survey, and then they sat in front of the tabernacle with Eleazar the priest, the elders, Joshua, and they began by lot choosing for each tribe what their inheritance would be. So it says that there was an inheritance which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, the heads of the fathers and the tribes of Jew children of Israel divided as an inheritance by lot in Shiloh, which is where the tabernacle sat for 400 years, before the Lord, at the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and so they made an end of dividing the country. Now for us, we have 197 nations. We, picked, we began drawing them today, so there's not that many left, but there are plenty left. And once we finish this, we'll get a second batch in, but we want to make sure every nation's God's choosing. So the bucket will come by, and you place your hand in there and pull one out. You can shuffle around all you want, but don't peek. You know, I know there's some nations of our choosing, but we want the nation of his choosing. It, and then pull that out, keep it past the bucket. If, you, if that's like weird, you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. 
And if you're just saying, I'm just visiting, I'm not a part of, of this church, but you are part of the living church, you're welcome to join us. Because there's not, it's really the, the nation we receive is a gift that God shows, part of the inheritance of Jesus. And then we bring it to the Lord before him in our, in our prayer, and we begin to lift that nation up. It's not something that we're supposed to fix the nation, save the nation. No one's going to blame you if there's an earthquake or a tsunami. <laughs> That was Cammie's first response. She's like, I don't want to let anybody know whose nation I have. Because <laughs> then if something goes bad, they'll blame me. <laughs> so it's none of that pressure, okay? It's really an exercise of receiving a gift and then carrying it. So the nation is, you have the nation, pass the bucket. Then following will be a clipboard. At that time, you go ahead and just write your name down, your, the name of the nation and the email. And then we'll know we've gotten all the nations. Uh, distributed and who has them in the same. If you send it an uh, email asking for a nation, we'll have somebody on the staff pull one out and send back that nation to you. And that way we'll just keep enlarging this as large as God wants it to go. Uh, praise the Lord. So can you bring the buckets back up? We'll pray over those one more time. I will say this, and it was scary. I was not scary. It was in, it was in, this morning I heard the Lord say, I wasn't expecting it. I was walking out of the kitchen into my prayer place. But as I heard the Lord, I, as sure as I know anything I've ever heard him say, I heard him say, these are my nations. And Psalm 2 tells us that the nation, nations of the world have been given to the Lord as an inheritance. And we are the inheritance. He's not, he's not looking to try to you know, wrangle people's properties. He's trying to pull people's hearts to him. And prayer is the way that happens. So we start with our heart toward heaven, but now we can carry a nation with us. And who knows what God's going to do. So Lord, we thank you, Father. We know that this means is a simple exercise that can help us learn much. And you can do as whatever and all that you want done with it. And so we consecrate these buckets again into your hand like you did in Shiloh before the tabernacle in the presence of God. May you by lot decide for all of us, the nation of your choosing, that you would have us to carry in our heart to, toward you in prayer for this year. We ask you to make those decisions and bring forth the fruit of our prayers. Even now, we thank you for the results that will grow as you would cause us to grow in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go ahead and we'll start distributing them. Randy Nelson is a true hero to me. I interviewed him a little bit in the first service. I hope he'll share some of his story, but he just left all. Oh yeah, by the way, if you chose a nation in the first service, don't choose another one. It's not swap or any of that. Keep the one you got. Okay. <laughs> of course, you can pray for all the nations that God puts on your heart. It's just a simple exercise. Uh, so they left in 1979 for Kenya and uh, have never returned. I mean, they come back once a year for about a month. They've lived in the Philippines. Now they currently live in Bangkok. And they really have been one of those whom God separated unto himself, both Randy and Edie. Edie's already bank back in Bangkok, so she can't be with us. And I believe that with this beginning of this year, God has released a uh, a word and faith, and he will encourage all of us in our journey for Christ. Amen? Let's try that again. Amen? Amen. Oh, that sounded so Baptist. I like that. All right, let's welcome Randy Nelson, please. I can't. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, yeah. yeah, come on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> really a joy to be here with you and what an honor to be able to speak to you this day, the first Sunday of the new year. Is that right? And so bless the Lord. I, uh, I, as Steve was saying in the first service, uh, it was quite an amazing. There, those of you who are here, there was quite an amazing thing that happened when Steve began to speak. And I just felt the presence of the Lord so powerfully. So uh, I've been praying about this day, and I really want to share my message with you, but I do not want to go over time, and we're already at 11.54, so please, somebody, stop me 
just stop me when it's over because I, 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 can, I can tend to be long. And I don't want to be long with you today. I wanted to share the, what the Lord has done. I, um, I, I believe very much, very, very much that uh, um, this, this is the beginning of something that the Lord is going to do right here in Jubilee. I've got a word to share with you, and I'm going to incorporate that in a little bit later in the message. But <clears throat> um, over the years, I've had an opportunity to speak, and I uh, love you so much. You have just uh, done amazing things. Uh, there, I don't know of a church. That, you know, my first time ever coming to Jubilee, I, I wasn't coming here. I came to a conference, actually. And uh, I, when I came in, I saw all these flags around here, and I go, what church has flags of every nation in its building? I mean, this is amazing. And I, I just impressed me so greatly to say, this church is going somewhere. It is unto something beyond what I've ever, ever seen before. And uh, so I, I've always really uh, kept that uh, in my heart and mind and my thoughts that uh, God is going to do amazing things, and this year is going to be the launching of something brand new. It's not going to be the same. We're going to, you're going to hit the ground running, and it's going to be a very amazing year uh, in every way. Um, I wanted to, during the first service, they've been showing some pictures of my former life <laughs> from a long, long time ago. But, uh, but I thought I would share quickly just my testimony of how I came to Jesus very quickly because I think it will relate to especially to the goodness and the grace of the Lord. And this year, as Steve was mentioning too, that uh, this coming year, I want to I also say to you and agree with Steve that neighborhoods and neighbors and people you know everywhere, your Jerusalem right here is going to change from being a year where Oh, I haven't been able to reach anyone in my neighborhood to suddenly everybody's looking at you and going, what's different about this person who lives on my block? I, I'm going to, you know, they will come to you. You're going to see people come to know the Lord. If you're not going to be having Bible studies in your homes and prayer pla places of prayer, the Lord can inst is going to institute many of those things in right where you live. So I'm excited about that. That just really resonated with me this morning. Uh, me too, when I was, uh, you know, graduated from high school, many of you can relate to this, you're ready to go, you're released from the gates, I'm out of the house and things are going to be wonderful, and I'm going to take my own direction, nobody else is going to tell me what to do, and uh, yeah, that worked really good for about three years, and uh, uh, 25 different jobs later, and, uh, the, and finally ending up uh, hoeing weeds in the oil fields of Santa Maria, clearing fire breaks around oil wells. Great job. <clears throat> Don't recommend it. Um, but, um, but the Lord put someone on that team that led me to Christ. And there was a, he was the only Christian there, and he just zeroed in on me. I don't know. Maybe I had a target on my back, but he led me to the Lord. And um, that was the most wonderful day of my life. That's why I'm so excited about people coming to know Jesus is the fact that neighbors and people that haven't ever received him, it's going to be like a new excitement in their life. And they're going to see the world's going to change to them. And it's going to be different. It's going to be different from what it is right now. And that's the way it was for me. I mean, even the sky and the trees and everything just looked, wow, this is, a, this is heaven on earth suddenly. And then the next day was a little bit different than that because my friend also told me that now you have to go to church. And I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't do that. I've been by churches and there's people in there and they're all dressed up and all they do is smile and hug you and they, you know, I mean, I don't want to go there. I'm a private person. I don't want anybody to get to know me that well. Sound... I, can you believe that? That's really what I said to him. He says, no, you should just give it a try. I said, okay. <laughs> so I went to church. And I was leaving, leaving. An elderly woman came up to me. I was, you know, in my 20s. I was 21. And she said, is your name, is your name Randy? I said, yes, yes, that's me. She opened up her book and she says, well, Randy, I've been praying for you for three months. And she showed me her prayers. 
what? How could you, how did you even know me? I mean, how, how did that happen? And I just, it just impressed me. You know, I, I just said, you prayed for me for three months? Yes, I've been praying for you for three months. And uh, I couldn't understand it, but it, it just said, oh, now I can go to church. <laughs> now I can go to church because there a door would have been open to me. And uh, I loved going to church. And so much so that I became the, the, the teacher of the college class and everything. Later I learned that how she prayed for me for three months is that I didn't know this, but my next door neighbor was a pastor, a retired pastor and his wife. And every time they'd see me come and go, they would pray, Lord, bless that young man. He looks directionless, you know. <laughs> Lord, help him. Help him as he goes out to hoe weeds, you know. I mean, I never met the people, but they just, they just, uh, one, the day I, did, I met them, they said, Randy, we, since you moved in there up to this very day, uh, we've been praying for you as you come and go. We see you coming and going. So I had, a, I had an amazing encounter with the Lord in those days, and uh, um, you know, the Lord just opened up doors. I, I realized that even if you believe in Jesus Christ, you can still go your own way. You can still perform your own will on the earth and not his will. It's very easy to do. I tried it. That also didn't work very long. And, and uh, I ended up failing a, a school up at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo in soil science. I didn't want to study that. I went up there to play football because that was another mistake. Don't try to play football if you have never played before. It's a big mistake. <laughs> when you seek your own will, you think you can do things you can't do. <laughs> Don't even try it. But the Lord was in there all the time. And at that point in time, the pastor of the church I went to said, Randy, you need to go to school. You're already teaching the college class. Why don't you go and get some education? It was there that I... I went to a school in, in uh, Eugene, Oregon, Bible school, and the Lord said to, to me, that spoke very clearly to me about missions through the pastor, through the teachers there, and, and I just said, yes, Lord, take me. I, I've done with my own will. I've, I'm, I'm only here because you saved me again. And, uh, and that, then everything began after that. I gave myself to the Lord fully. And went on to um, finish school there. There I, I joined a, a mission organization. And uh, the next thing I know, you know, I'm, I'm going to more school than I've ever, ever thought I would go to. Seven years of, of college and, and even went to a seminary for one year. Only as a requirement. And when I met Edie, I'm, I, I, I'm telling you the truth. I wanted to get married that seven years, but I could not find anybody interested in being a missionary at that time. And, and that, that probably wasn't the right thing to say when you're trying to date somebody. <laughs> Would you like to go to Africa? Would you like to? Never, uh, don't try that either. Um, but at the end of my time of school, uh, my friends had been praying for me. I said, don't pray anymore. I'm already going to Africa, going to Kenya. I don't have a wife. I'm going alone, going with a team, you know, and, and that was, and they said, okay, we're not praying for you anymore. And uh, that night, I met Edie. <laughs> <laughs> so I can refer to you to this, that if you're trying to do something and it's not happening, give up. Just give up, you know. <laughs> Just give up and say, Lord, let your will be done, you know? And then uh, he's quick. He's very quick to answer, and he will. And so, so now, uh, now uh, Edie and I are married. We met in March. We, we went to the field in October. That uh, is not a very long period of time to be engaged uh, and, uh, you know, get all, everything together and uh, get married. But... But let me pick up the story of when you see these pictures of Africa, they're also a miraculous story. One of which I'm telling you about the grace of God is so amazing, so powerful, so full, and so abiding that uh, uh, giving myself to the Lord, I never imagined how much grace is available for, for things. Because I go back, as Steve was saying, Steve was there last year in Kenya and and every time I go, I go, 
I can't believe we lived here. I can't believe I raised my, my two boys out here. I can't be- believe that we were able to do this. And uh, then I can appreciate the Lord's grace even more, again, again, and again. The, um, <clears throat> but, but getting to there was quite a miracle. The Turkana were an unreached people group listed as no churches among the nomadic community, about 200,000 people. And uh, out in the middle of the desert, in the year was probably around 1977, 78, somewhere in there, a diviner, traditional Turkana diviner, was sitting in his, in his home, fell asleep at night, had a dream that whoever is coming tomorrow, there's somebody very important coming tomorrow, and whatever they have to say, you must listen to them. And he got up in the morning and told his wife, and his wife said, well, I'm going to town. I'm taking the, the, the black and the, the white and the gray and the, and, the, and the brown goat, and we're going to sell them, and we're going to buy some food and bring it back. He said, well, if you meet somebody, you know, be, be, I had this dream. And sure enough, his wife is in town. She meets a Kenyan man who was studying his and working on his degree in college, and he said, he said, I'm doing research on traditional religions, and I'm looking for a Turkana diviner. Do you know one? And she says, come with me. So through the interpreter, they loaded up the, the goods in the car and her, and they drove out to the home of, of Nangudia. It was his name, the diviner. And when they got there, he said, I had a dream about you coming. And so over a week's time, he spent there interviewing him and led him to the Lord. This Kenyan man named Bidan and Buga led him to the Lord, the first believer among a nomadic community. And so <clears throat> that uh, Kenyan man went back to Nairobi. He finished his degree, and then he, then he got a scholarship to go to Biola, uh, right over here in Southern California. That was 1978. That was in uh, October, the year that Edie and I were married. That a man from, from World Vision heard, from, went to the same church as Edie and I at that time said, Randy, I hear you're praying about going to Turkana. Did you know that there's a man in school over here at Biola who actually has been to where you're going? Do you want to talk to him? And I said, yes. I went over to meet him. The first thing he says to me is, Randy, and Edie, you need to go to Turkana. There is a man who's, been, been, who's received the Lord there. He's a traditional Turkana diviner. And he is going to open the door to the gospel to the whole community, the whole belie- all, the, all the people out there. I said, thank you, Lord. That was direction. That was an amazing answer to prayer. And so already our course had taken a direction, uh, and we knew that the Lord was in it all the way through. And we had to continually remember that Without those things, sometimes if things get difficult, there were a lot of obstacles in the way. I won't go into all of them, but even my own teammates in Kenya didn't want me to, in Edie and I to go up there. They said, Randy, it's not easy to live there. You will not do well. Within two weeks, you'll be wanting to come back. It's too hot. There's no water. How are you going to raise your kids there? There's scorpions running all over the place and snakes over here, and the people are uncertain about whether they even want you there. And I said, well, I prayed, and a man told me that I should go. That's all I could say. And I said, in my heart, I know we're supposed to go. And it was even more difficult than that after arriving there and getting settled in. And then the picture you saw right up there, we were settled into language learning. Uh, Within one month, we had bandits raid our house, shoot through, through... shoot through our house, we were on the floor, and I said, Edie, if we get through this night, in the morning, we are going to leave, and we are never coming back here again. (laughs) Obviously, we made a big mistake, and our friends were right. (laughs) And she says, don't believe it. I have to remember that I married a special woman. She grew up in Taiwan. She was born in Hong Kong. Her parents were missionaries. She said, Randy, that's you know, that was terrible last night, and I, I'm with you, too. I, I feel very scared right now, but I'll tell you this. The Lord is in it. He, the enemy wants you to leave, wants you and I to leave, and this is warfare. That was my first introduction to spiritual warfare. <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I was educated, but I wasn't educated, if you know what I mean. And I said, okay, 
we'll stay. And we're glad we did because after 14 years, we saw seven churches planted. And uh, praise the Lord, there's more than 50 there now. And so I, I, I always want to refer to the fact that, that Lord, may it be your will, not, not, not my will. You, you, do, you have your will and your way. Now, I want to talk to you specifically, Jubilee, about a variety of things. In fact, I want to talk more about you than I want to talk about me. But I, I wanted to share that briefly with you because I just feel it's important to understand that the same grace and the same direction and the same miraculous things can, is, are continuing to happen and I know they are for many of you. In fact, probably almost every one of you could stand here and share a testimony with, with everyone here of how the Lord miraculously worked in your life. But, but I believe very much that, that uh, the Lord has called us and has sent us to the field because he has a heart for the, and love for the nations. I am beyond words to say about today, about the fact that a church would come together and choose nations to pray for. I have never in my life been in a church service anywhere. I don't care what part of the world. I haven't been in that, all that many places, a few. But here, even here in the U.S., take on such a wonderful, wonderful thing that you're doing here today. You're going to remember this day, Julie, that this is the day you engaged in something much bigger, something much broader, something more deep, something more higher, than you've ever done before. When you, when you say and make a statement like this, that, Lord, the nations of this earth need to, to be reached. We need to go where people have not heard the gospel. It begins with prayer. So today we are committing ourselves. In other words, we're giving up what we might want to do and receiving what you want, Lord, receiving your heart. And we're going to take a nation at a time, and we're going to, each one of us, pray for that nation. And I tell you right now, that activates things in heaven right now, that are prayers that have been prayed down through the centuries for the world. It activates. And you, are, you Jubilee, you're being zeroed in right now. It's as if heaven has, has found you, known you were here for a long time, <laughs> and found you and anointed you in a very special way. Nobody, nobody ever that I know of can, can come forth and say that such a, make a statement like that. There were in the past, there were big movements in the past. There were churches, there were churches in the past that prayed for nations to be reached. Most of you know about the Moravians, the Moravians, oh my goodness. A hundred years of prayer, a hundred years of prayer. The first five years, nothing happened. Nothing happened, but they still continued to pray. Five years of continual prayer, never unending prayer, 24 hour prayer, and nothing happens, and almost ready to give up when, when suddenly there is a powerful, powerful thing that takes place where believers are changed and glowing like lights. I mean, they, they said something happened. <laughs> it lasted for four months, and it was a, as if the Lord Himself came. Now, why? Why couldn't, Lord, why didn't you just make it happen on the first year so that everyone could rejoice? Why did you make it not happen in four, five years? Don't question the Lord. Just enjoy when it comes. Don't question his timing. His timing is unto him, and his timing is not our time. Many of you have prayed. Many of the saints of this church have prayed that won't see on earth themselves and won't be a part of what's going to happen in the future because they've already gone on to glory. But it will happen. Yeah. The Lord will answer prayers. And he does answer prayers. And he, he brings everything to completion. We think that when we get an answer to prayer, it's just for now. Thank you, Lord. I'm on my way. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for the answer to prayer. No. No. He continues. When he creates an opening, a breakthrough, he continues it all the way to the end. He, we may not recognize that, but he continues to be faithful to every prayer that was prayed. And that's why when you take a nation like this and you go, Lord, this nation that I've taken this day, 
sorry, and you, you, you pray for that nation, things are happening up there. Already have been happening. Lord knew you were here. Now you're all here gathered in one place, praying for nations around the world here. I fully believe here there's going to be days and days and days of glory in this building right here. And I believe people will come. I believe you're, you know what? People have seen many different revivals of different kinds. And they've all been basically around 100 years apart. Really big, big movements that really shifted nations and sent missionaries out around the world. Student volunteer movement at the beginning of the 19th century, of the 20th century, and how people went out. But this is different. You won't even be able to recognize the former revivals. This one will be a different kind of revival. Don't even think that you have to reproduce anything of the past when something new is going to be given. Some new things that we haven't even, haven't even had. And an, another thing too, what to, what, what to look for and what to enjoy is that the Lord changes an atmosphere. He changes, he changes the very, <laughs> just the very uh, things that you've become used to now are different. Now they're different. Now they're, now they're strange. When, like I said, when you on your block have been driving by your same neighbor's house every day, oh, he'll never believe. He's an, he's an atheist. He'll never believe in the gospel. Or, oh, I've talked with her many times, and she just says, oh, I'm a 50% Christian or whatever. You know, those days are going to be gone. And even things like that, your neighbors are going to become believers in Jesus Christ. Beginning in Jerusalem and unto the ends of the earth. That's where it's going to be. Beginning in Jerusalem. Now this house here, as I was, I was telling Steve that I, during the break, I, I, I felt very strong. I felt, you know, there's, a, there's a, a calling, more than a calling. You know, I think about the prayers that were prayed hundreds of years ago. And that Jubilee found its way to this place here and put flags all around its building. That those are the answers to the prayers of the saints of the past. And I believe very much that there's going to be an unusual thing happen here along the same lines as what happened with the Moravian church. The Moravian church were sending over 100 years, sent 300 missionaries out in 100 years time. In those days, that was really difficult. But they did it. They did it by prayer because they were agreeing with, the, with God on what he wanted, with the Lord, with what he wanted to do. And I believe he's going to do the same here. You may not understand it, see it, know how it can happen, but he does. And all you're doing is activating what he has put into your hearts and this day and this agreement and this commitment that how can a, how can a church come together and pray for nations and make a commitment that we are going to pray for nations and watch the Lord move. Not only that, but we ourselves are going to go buy passports and we're going to carry these passports and we're going to be ready to go. When the Lord calls, you're going to be ready. You're not going to be, there's going to be no excuse. There's going to be no reason to say no. You're not going to do what I did and just try to do your own thing and try to run this way or that way. But you're going to be ready to go. You're going to have your passport in hand. You're going to have prayed for the nation. You're going to know that the Lord is moving powerfully. And when you get there, things begin to change. I'll tell you the truth. I have seen from this church, I can, I can give you testimony for Thailand, and now I can give you testimony for Kenya. But in Thailand, you have really rocked that nation. Do you understand that? It's not been but because of prayer. Just you prayed for Thailand and then you sent teams out. And I've watched what they've done. Steve came out. We were in the middle of a crisis there. There was no peace on the ground whatsoever. The nation was ready to turn into a, a major, violent, <laughs> burning place. And it did a little bit. But Steve came with a powerful message of reconciliation. And we prayed in a church there. Just one church. Full of people who are committed with an agreement. And they prayed for reconciliation and peace and forgiveness to come. And when that happened, things began to shift in the heavenly places. The determination to, 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 to dis and see a nation destroyed was changed. And God set in motion things that are now still being realized, still happening. Becky came out to pray 
with, 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 uh, with Steve and Richard, I can't see you very well, um, went and prayed and things began to change in the nation, came at a time and a place. Larry, he doesn't even know how old he is. <laughs> he doesn't know how old, that's on my word. <laughs> he does not know his age. <laughs> But he's after that nation like a hungry dog. You know, he's, 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 <laughs> it's not going to quit easily. <laughs> but the Lord, the Lord sort of, you know, we're going to get the church mobilized. We're going to get pastors trained. We're going to get people, you know, rocked for Jesus. We're going to get out there and we're going to win the lost. And we're going to, there's going to be a healing revival that's going to sweep the nation of Thailand. And, and look, Okay, you're not the only ones that pray for Thailand, but look at this. I tell you the truth. The Lord has it on his mind that he would send out his people. And you have prayed and you've set the course. This is your prayer. Lord, see that Thailand's reached. Okay, got it. Now we're going to send people. Will it happen today? I don't know. I hope so. But it may not happen for a while. But whatever it is, it's taking place right now. And even teams, Ali came out, and Ben and Petey and others came out and really, really did a major, major thing. You know, I don't know if you're really aware of this, but we've been trying, trying, trying to be able to reach the Northeast because we want the, the flow of young people going to the city of Padia. And we've been working in the schools. And um, uh, we had an amazing prayer time up there in this small little town. And the following, that, that was one month, and the next month we had a group out and we were able to bring out the parents of the children who are basically sending them into evil things. Come to a meeting and sit there and, sh and for our team to tell them all of the dangers of sending your children off before they're fully educated and fully know what they're getting into. It, Padilla is a very dark city in many ways, but it is the light of Jesus Christ is shining there now and all the way up to the source, all the way up to the root, it's happening. Once again, Jubilee, you were in there. You got in there. The Lord put you in there. He got an anointing upon you. We've prayed for Pak Chung many times, but it was when you prayed, it was when your team came that we saw the breakthrough happen the next, the next week. That's why is that? Why does that things like that happen? The Lord knows. He knows. He knows because he, right in that room back there, which is a very anointed place, but, but right here with flags around this whole church, you have been reaching out to nations. You are, your, your prayers have gone before you only to get there and find out that the Lord has been there before you, already working out what you prayed for. And he's going to continue to do that do you want to see those cards? Do you want to see them just ignite on fire? Those nations just ignite? Just say this very simple prayer. Lord, set this nation on fire for you. And Lord, if it's me and my passport, send me, Lord. I'll go. And watch what the Lord will do. He is not, he is not slow in his mind to reaching the nations. In our time... He might, we might think he's a bit slow, but he is, he is thorough. Believe me, he is complete. He won't forget anything. He won't forget one thing. He won't forget one prayer you prayed. He will not ever, ever, ever forget the prayer that you prayed. It cost him his son so that that prayer could be answered. <laughs> That's how much he wants the prayer to come from you. Some say, Randy, why didn't the diviner sitting out there in the desert who had the dream that he was going to have a visitor and that he should listen to what he said, why couldn't God just continue and just say, and also he's going to tell you about Jesus and you should believe in the Lord and all your people. It's because God didn't make the world that way. He didn't make us that way. And he didn't make what he wants to do that way. He decided this. He said, we're going to do this together. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and you're going to do what you're going to do. And that was a decision made long ago when he gave his son a sacrifice so that every person on this earth 
will have an opportunity to hear of Jesus Christ, the saving love of Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, you don't have to look far to see the need. Amen? You don't have to go very far to know how, how badly we are needed in the world. I know many of you are not called, and you should not go when you're not called. And I know that, and I'm not saying you should. But let me say this. That, that you take that information about that passport and you pray and you ask the Lord. Because I never envisioned in my life, and I know many others, who ever thought they would ever wind up in a specific country doing what they've done. And many, many who've come out to Thailand, same thing. Randy, I just can't believe I'm here doing this right now. I never envisioned this. I, never, I don't know if I like Thailand or not, but here I am. It's not about liking something at all. It's about the Lord working through you who will become his vessel. You know, when you gave up your life to serve the Lord, you gave him your life. You know that, right? And that means everything. You became his vessel that he wants to pour his love out through you. Uh, As I was saying in the early service, it's like this. Randy, why did you do this? It's because of the love of God. It's the love of Jesus. Christ comes. The love, this, his love compels us to, to continue to do this. I know, Jubilee, that there's days coming right here in this church where you're going to see the glory of God come in power. And people will come. People will come from far and wide to witness this themselves and to become a part of it. To say, I too... I'm here. I've got my passport. I want to pray for a nation. I want to go out. Whether it's Jerusalem or whether it's Samaria or Judea or unto the ends of the earth. There's going to be an an, an, a coming in and a going out. A time for change and transformation. I believe very much so. I believe that God has brought everything around to that point. I believe that he has called you He has so gifted you. He has poured his heart out into you. He has given you awesome, awesome ministers in this church, including your senior pastor and his lovely wife, who who were chosen a long time ago to, 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 to pastor this church. And I tell you, this is all by divine divine purpose. This is all by divine purpose. There's a day that you may be saying, well, I don't know why I joined Jubilee, or I don't know why I'm here. I'm telling you this. The day is going to come that you're going to be so glad. You're going to be wearing Jubilee t-shirts everywhere. (laughs) Jubilee hats. and go. I'm Jubilee. (laughs) I am Jubilee. (laughs) I'm the church that's sending all those people who are going out to the world. Uh, They're having such an amazing visitation of the Lord here. I'm Jubilee. I'm a part of that church. I'm the one that's seeing my neighborhood, you know, having prayer meetings in my home and and all the people I know, there's going to be a day like that of rejoicing, brothers and sisters. There's going to be a day just like that that's going to come. When Steve was out in Kenya this last year, I was just sitting there listening to him teach and preach and watching the faces of the people there. Years ago, I used to preach in that same church, you know, and and these people, I mean, the, the little ones now are, you know, over my, my head. And uh, now the little ones, their children are coming to me and pestering me during the service, you know. And Steve is preaching there and you know, doing the same thing. They love the hair on my arms, you know. It's everything. And I have to listen to Steve preach. No, no, no. We want to bother you. But they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Steve's uh, uh, message was, is so, so powerful to, to everyone there. I just, uh, I just know that uh, um, there, there, it's just a reminder to me that the Lord had in mind all these years, from the very beginning up to now, and, and now the launching time has come, that this shall be a church unlike any church. We're not a normal church. Don't even say you're just a church. You're not a church. You are a called church, an anointed church, a special church, whatever word you want to describe it as. You are not anything but normal. And don't ever try to be. Don't ever try to be that. 
Be the one that, says, that has a fiery passion in your heart that is not settled in your spirit, that's not happy to see the lost, not hearing the gospel. Don't ever be a church that just says, well, we have services every Sunday and we have advertisements in the paper. Don't ever be that. Be the one like this that has a passion for the lost, whether they be right here or all the way around the world. Because that's the church that the Lord zeroes in on. That's, that describes a lot about the Moravian church who said, you know something? There's people in this world that are going to hell because they don't know Jesus Christ. And we cannot be happy with that. We cannot be satisfied with that deep in our spirit. And we can't figure out how we're going to go ourselves, but we are going to pray and out of there came some of the most amazing testimonies in the whole world. Out of that one movement for a hundred years did many, many nations receive the gospel and start to flourish. Out of that one movement, God showed so many things that were missing in missionary movements around the world. Uh, back in the 1700s, this is the year 2019 we start this year. But you're not starting it in, a, in the old way. You're starting it fresh in a new way. Yeah. In a new way. I jotted, I jotted something down here. Let me see if I've already told you all of it or not. Jubilee, you are not just a church or a gathering place. You are set apart and called uniquely to spearhead a movement like this. A praying people that in one minute the presence of the Lord can come down. You're standing and facing the Lord himself. And that's, a, that's what I saw. You're just standing there as a church. And the Lord's before you. It's, we just don't know how to describe it. It just was so vivid to me um, that, that <laughs> you're just looking at the Lord's face. And he is so happy with you, smiling, smiling and happy. Saying, go, good going, Jubilee. You got it. It took this long, but you got it now. <laughs> and you've received my very heart for the nations. And you're not happy with what you see out there. You want to see it changed. And you've decided right now today that I'm going to give everything. I'm going to go get a passport and I'm going to pray for that nation until I see it reached. Until I see movement and activity and people coming to know Jesus. You are standing and facing the Lord himself, ready to launch his creative plan th through to bring a nation back to God. Days of his presence, many faithfully crying out for the lost in nations around the world. Oh, the Lord will surely go beyond expectations, for he is extravagant. I just wrote this early this morning. <laughs> just came. Nothing can stop his move on you. Nothing, nothing is going to stop his move upon you. He is directed to hearts that are on fire and deploying his people to nations. You've just lit a fire that the Lord is attracted to and one in which he is going to come. And never, never stop coming. And nothing going to be in his way. And as there are, is going to be shifts in atmospheres. Things are going to change. Things are going to be different. Empowerment and things that you've never realized. How can I say that? Because I know it through and through by experience. I have had the privilege of going to an unreached people group and seeing them reached. I've had the privilege the privilege of going to an awful, awful city in Thailand when I didn't want to. I'd, Shona and I get along real well. And, and yet serving, uh, you know, serving the Lord so, 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 so well and the things that he wants to do. I know it. I know it. And he will do it. Can we stand together? I want to pray for you as you get ready to go. Maybe 
maybe this isn't, maybe today I'm just going to pray like a word of commissioning and sending and going. If you have your card, maybe hold it in your hand if you like. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you, Father, that you have brought Jubilee to this place, Lord. That through all the trials and things, Lord, through all the difficulties, whatever they may be, through victories, Father, that have yet been, that have come and yet to be had, Lord, today is a day for a new thing to begin here at Jubilee, Lord. And Father, thank you, Father, that you have brought faithful the word faithful, Father. I see faithful just on everyone. Faithful, 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 faithful. And Lord, this day, Father, with cards held in your hand and passports yet to be gotten, Lord Jesus, I pray today, Lord Jesus, that heaven be activated now. That the prayers that are prayed, Father, for nations, Lord, that we'll connect up, Father, with all the different things that have to connect together to make these things a reality on the earth, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father, that as you, as hearts are turned, Father, to you, for each and every person in this house, Father, I pray, Father, for a, an anointing and a commissioning to be upon them, Lord, to go to nations, Lord, to go to cities, Father, to go to neighborhoods, Father, from here to the ends of the earth, Lord. From here to the ends of the earth, Lord. And all points in between. And I pray, Father, that there be a sending, Father. Just as you have sent your Son, Lord Jesus. Father, the scripture that you've given in Romans chapter 10, Father, is so true. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, I pray that now. Father, for everyone to be instilled in your heart. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> for whoever calls on the name of the Lord. And then they that call on him. And how can they call on him who they have not believed? How can they call upon him not believed? And how, how shall they... Shall, and, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? You've been anointed, brothers and sisters. You know the word of God. You've heard of Jesus Christ. You have everything you need to go to nations right now. So this day, those that are out there who have not heard of Jesus Christ, hear their call, brothers and sisters. Hear their call from the nations of the earth to the farthest corners. From here to the farthest corners who sit in sometimes utter darkness wondering if there is a God in heaven. Out in the middle of the desert, I met a woman who said, Randy, before you came, I used to look up to heaven and say, is there a God in heaven? I've never forgotten that. Wow. She's sitting in a little hut out in the middle of the desert with very little to live on and saying, is there a God in heaven? Brothers and sisters, people on the earth are saying that right now. Is there a God in heaven? What will your answer be? Yes. We will go. Yes. Can you say that word? Yes. Lord, I have my passport. I'm praying for countries, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Send me to answer that call. That answer those calls that come from people who haven't heard of you. Now, Father, I just ask that your blessing would be upon each and every person this day, Father, to fulfill everything. Father, where, where there's the low ground, bring it up, Lord. Father, we pray for grace and provision. Father, the same grace that you, that you gave Edie and I, 
that we weren't even aware of most of the time, Father. Pour that grace out abundantly upon everybody here the same way, Lord. That one day you'll exclaim, I can't believe, I can't believe I'm standing here in Iraq. I can't believe I'm standing here in Saudi Arabia. I can't believe I'm standing here in, in Afghanistan and sharing the gospel. And people are being saved. I can't believe, Lord, that I'm here on this island out in the South Pacific or somewhere else. I can't believe it, Lord. That's what I think this gonna, you're going to hear. There's going to be far greater testimonies at this pulpit than you've ever heard before. Father, bless each and every person here this day with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Randy. You can be seated for just one moment, please. Thank you, Randy. Who knows? It's going to be awesome to watch where we, where we go and what happens. A couple quick things before we, we uh, pray for Randy and bless him, send him out. We will put some buckets up front if you like to sow into his ministry. Randy Needy, it's, it's right of us. It's, they go out I'm not asking for anything. We send them out. We desire to in a manner worthy of God. And we want to bless them. And they've got a full schedule ahead in Thailand this year. Uh, Randy did mention, when you're holding your nation, you start to learn it. We have like 15 more nations. So if you didn't get to choose when you weren't in, you were in about, come up front afterwards. Randy, Brian will be here by the baptismal. And we'll make sure we get your name. If we run out, we'll, we'll start next Sunday brand new with a whole 197. So that during the month of January, as long, we want to probably give opportunity for anyone as they enter in to step into that partnership. But this month, we're really focusing on it. So come, anyone who wasn't able, they can grab one then. In addition to the nation, it was a simple little idea. No obligation, but Brent Randy really hit on it. I was going to share it next. Is that when you go home, whether if you live on a neighborhood, just bless the street you live on. Bless the homes to the right, to the homes to the left, to the homes to across the street. My neighborhood, there's 20 homes, including ours. So if you live in an apartment complex, it's the car homes, you know, the apartments that are on the floor you're at. It Be creative, but, but it's just nothing more than just saying, Lord, bless them, that you would reveal your son to the, every household. It just moves us in concert. And I think Randy has the authority to say to us today that if you will take these issues into your heart. You're touching the heart of the Father. And once you touch the heart of the Father, there's no telling what he will do to fulfill his dream that he paid for with his son. So I can't, I'm excited about this. I really, really thank you. Perfect, Randy. You were, you're, thank you. We honor you for what you've done in your life and your living. We honor that. We really do. And would you just stand so we can just direct our prayer to you? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Randy and Edie. We thank you that they could just go and keep going and haven't stopped going. And Lord, we know, I believe you said to me that not only are you the better years and the greater experiences of God about to break forth through their lives in ministry and in Thailand this year and throughout the land and the world and even in Kenya and into Africa, but I also believe that you said that when he came and shared his testimony, that the testimony of Jesus would come alive in every one of us. And all of a sudden, where our dreams have been laden or held back or kept or we have not known how to continue going, you were going to initiate and activate our movement. We receive that anointing today. Now, Lord, we bless Randy. We say prosper them, increase them, help them, send them out. Let them have the best year of ministry they've ever had. May they continue to activate. And Lord, we thank you that just as there were those who encouraged Randy as he began and Edie, may we be those too, not just the goers, but the encouragers, the ones who can see the new thing happening in the person of bias next to us and pray for them, activate them, encourage them, support them in any way. We thank you. We seal this to you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified. Lord, we look forward to the adventure. Uh, thank you for Google. It's the first place we can start. Wikipedia will help us learn a little. But then you, the Spirit will start picking us into your heart and your dreams for that land. 
And we pray that you fulfill, your dream will be fulfilled in every country of the earth in this, in this season of this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you, Randy. We love you.